Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. Well, today I'm going to get kind of serious on you. I am going to uh, have a podcast that's a little different than I usually do. I know that uh, some people in their part of the world, everything is calm and peaceful. But somewhere in the world, there's a war going on. And, you know, even today, uh, while I'm making this podcast, we know that Russia and the Ukraine is at war. But I'm not here to talk to you about that war. I'm here to talk to you about war in general. You know, everybody knows this photograph here. This picture was taken on Iwo Jima when they raised the flag after the island was invaded and captured by the Americans. Uh, the island was occupied by the Japanese, and uh, there was quite a battle that goes on. To kind of give you some sort of a perspective on how many lives were lost in this one battle, a lot of you might remember Pearl Harbor if you're old enough. Well, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, they figured it was 2,000 plus uh, people died during that uh, battle. Now compare that to Iwo Jima. When the island was uh, invaded, it was shelled first for some time and then uh, it was taken over. There was 70,000 lives were lost. Now remember, Pearl Harbor was bad. We know, we remember that from history. 2,000 plus died. But here we have over 70,000 died. 70,000 lives. You know, you don't think that war takes its casualties. You know, I, can, I go back into... Uh, Remembering a lot of this because uh, this island was invaded in 1945. I was seven years old when this happened. And I spent ten and a half months on this island in the 50s when I went into the military. So I learned a lot about this island. But in war, in World War One, there was uh, 37 million people died in World War One, But in World War Two, there was 78,000, or I'm sorry, 78 million were lost. So if you total those together, just those two wars alone, there was 115 million people died. You know, this, uh, this podcast that I'm doing today, I'm going to... I'm going to probably do maybe a couple more after this because there's so much to talk about. And I want to uh, take and uh, give you some sort of perspective on war. And with that said, I have just a couple more pictures here. Let me just switch uh, to this picture here. This is the island of Iwo Jima. You know, it isn't much of an island. It's about five miles long, two and a half miles wide at its widest point. But as you notice, there's an airfield right in the center of it. And that airfield uh, could accommodate some pretty large uh, planes. Now, I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, how much different uh, this war would have been if uh, we would have had the technology that we even had in the 50s instead of in the 40s. I was on a SAC base in uh, Texas, Dias Air Force Base in Abilene, Texas, and we had B-47s and KC-97s, uh, air refuelers. Uh, we had uh, a lot of other aircraft too, but that was the, the main thrust of the Strategic Air Command was that we could send bombers anywhere in the world, air refuel them, get them to their destination point, drop their payload, and 
and then come back and I refuel if need be again. Well, back then we didn't have that technology and we couldn't launch a, a bomber off of an aircraft carrier, so this island was very important. That's why it uh, took so many lives to get this island. So like I say, if we had the technology that we had just a few years after, we could have saved a lot of lives. But that's foresight. War is terrible. And how many people died in wars? Well, we're going to look at an article later. Uh, maybe in this broadcast, maybe not. Uh, it will, we'll see. It talks about how many people died in wars. Well, I'm going to share my screen here. And here's um, a website. How tens of thousands of soldiers died in the bloodiest battle of Iwo Jima. There's a kind of a, a gal review. And I, I just want to let you know, some of these pictures are uh, might be disturbing. So think again if it's uh, not for children. So. Well, here's I'm just going to go through some of these, these photos. Now remember, I was here after the war. But we were still cleaning up the mess that was made during the 40s all the way into the 50s. And if you go out now, the island was given back to the Japanese. All those lives lost to win the war. That's what it all was about, to win the war. Well, I remember these LSTs. We used to still get them in in the 50s used to unload our cargo and uh, I drove a forklift for a while and then I ro uh, had a DA dozer who used to push sand up around the base to keep the water from going in. But these were troop carriers. These were bringing the soldiers and supplies and uh, their rations and so forth, their weapons. And this is all part of the invasion. Once they got in, the battle was uh, really fierce. As you can see, they're launching missiles. And these were the crude missiles. These weren't the missiles we have today. Like I say, this is very disturbing to see all these bodies in these trenches. A lot of lives lost. I'm going through the series pretty fast because... Uh, they're disturbing. Lives after life was lost in this battle. It was not a pleasant place to be. I wake up this morning in the comfort of my home because soldiers like this gave their lives. And yet, people do not respect the vets. You know, I'm a vet, but I'm not looking for respect uh, because I didn't fight these battles, but these guys did. These guys were veterans of foreign war. I know my brother, he would be 103 right now if he was living. He's 20 years older than I am. And he fought on the beaches of Normandy uh, and I'll tell you some war stories that he told me. But let's just keep going with Iwo Jima. These, uh, these photos were taken, and they're, they're just, yeah, they're precious. Can you imagine being there? These guys sitting around here trying to protect them and a uh, mortar going off that close by. They were, the Japanese were dug in. That island was all honeycombed with caves. There was so many of them. You know, these little pop-ups keep popping up. Uh, let me just keep going here. Yep. Got to get on the right screen. These are the Japanese that were captured. They were fighting for their cause, their country, and we were fighting for ours. 
Uh, they had nurses. A lot of wounded. And we're not even counting uh, the wounded. I was just counting those that had lost their lives, over 70,000. I don't know what the count on is of the, uh, the those that were wounded. You know, this soldier with this little cat on his hat, I want to talk to you about that. When the Japanese were on the island, when they came over in ships, uh, there was rats that came on these ships and got on the island. And I can vouch for this. When I was there, there was rats that were bigger bigger than this cat. <laughs> uh, so the Japanese brought domesticated cats over to the island to help with the rat problem they had. And these cats, after the war, went wild. And we had what they looked like an everyday house cat but you didn't want to get near them. They were vicious. And I believe there was some sort of a wild cat on the island and they crossbreed it or something because these cats were, they weren't little pussy cats like this. Well, you can see the battle. It's really something that was ship after ship after ship that came in. After they, they shelled this island for I don't know how long, then the ships uh, started to come. What an aftermath. You know, this island was all vegetation when I was over there. It didn't take 10, 12 years and everything was growing back. They had, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a jungle. The island's down near the equator. It was hot. So it wasn't a pleasant battle to fight. Let me just keep going with some of these pictures. Yeah, this is really, this must have really been something to be there when this was all going on. Wow. Well, these, this equipment came off those, uh, LSTs that were pulling aboard. Again, we have this picture, the flag, raising it on Mount Saribachi. I stood on the top of Mount Saribachi back quite a few times. And boy, I just, you know, I think about this. You gotta sneak in an advertisement once in a while. Boy, I tell you, that, that soldier there looks like my brother almost. But I know that wasn't my brother, was not on Iwo Jima. There's a guy with his leg bandaged up. You know, the island is uh, called uh, the Black Pearl of the Pacific. And the reason for it is, is that the beaches are black. The island is actually a volcanic ash uh, that was an active volcano at the end of uh, Mount Zerbachi at one time, but it's no longer active. Yeah, that's the most famous picture ever taken during wartime. <laughs> Not much to be said. The massive invasion. Oh. Wow, one photo after another. I know that this is uh, a podcast I'm not gonna be able to put on uh, 
my audio podcast because you won't be able to see any of these images. But you can go out and uh, get on it. You can uh, do a search on uh, the internet. You can find a lot more pictures than this. Uh, this is quite, quite the, quite the, the slideshow, and we went through these already. So I can end this uh, right here. I'm just going to close this one off. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the war. I found this article from 19, or I'm sorry, from 2003, and it was in, a, in the Times, and uh, I found some of it to be accurate and some of it not, uh, and I'll, I'll try to explain that a little bit. But he asked the question, he starts out, what every person should know about war, and then he asked, what is war? Well, he defines war as an act of conflict that claims more than a thousand lives. That's considered a war. I, I won't disagree with him, but uh, there have been smaller wars also. And there's also been... Uh, what we would call police actions, uh, like over in, uh, oh, I can't even remember where it was now, uh, Formosa, I think it was. And there was a line that uh, it was said to be no man's land. You had the enemy on one side and uh, enemy on the other side, and nobody would go into this land in the middle. And that was the, the strip of land that uh, was a killing zone. If you went over there, you could lose your life. And that wasn't even considered a war. That was just considered a police action. Well, in the past, he says, 3,400 years of humans have been entirely, uh, of the past 3,400 years, humans have been entirely at peace, only 268 of them. Well, I, I don't agree with them because in my studies of human history and, uh, and the Bible, and uh, you might not agree with me, but I believe that we're in the 6,000th year of existence right now. Uh, oh, somebody will say, well, what about evolution? What about all these fossils that we find that are millions of years old? Can you imagine when God created the world? He didn't create an immature world. When he created a tree, a tree was of full age. When he created animals, they were of full age. When he created man, they were of full age, man and woman. Can you imagine if God would have just created a baby? No. And uh, so we don't really know uh, in respect to age how old things really were when they were created. But anyway, getting back to the fact that we've been in existence for 6,000 years. We're in a 6,000 year. Every number of the Bible means something. I've studied numbers, and uh, the number of man is six. And we're told this uh, even in the book of Revelation. And uh, the number of the beast, we know, is the number of man, and six score and six, 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 six. So the year of God, the Lord's year, is the 7,000th year. And I believe that's going to be the 1,000-year reign of Christ will be during that 7,000th year. And the number eight is when we go off into eternity, we have no more time. You see, a lot of people try to figure God out. Uh, well, we're in a box, and we can't think out of the box. 
God is out of the box. He's in two realms. He's in the realm of eternity, which has no time. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows exactly what's going to happen, how it was all planned out. And then he knows uh, what's going on in the realm of time. And he's in full control. God is God. And we got to let him be the God. So when we start thinking about 3,400 years of hum humans or humanity, that's wrong. I believe it's 6,000 years. Now, how many people have died during the war? You know, he's figuring 108 million people were killed in wars in the 20th century. Well, I know that's more than what than what that number is. Remember, I got 15 million, or I'm sorry, 115 million, and he's got a hundred and uh, uh, what did I say, 108 million. And that's just in the 20th century. That's First World War, Second World War, Korean War. I didn't even count those. Uh, and I haven't counted any of the wars that are going on in the Middle East. So there's a lot of lives that are lost. You know, I'm going to give you a, uh, see if I can find it real quick. I don't have it up here, but I think I got it. Uh, if I just look here, uh, world death toll, okay. Here they got one war. So far this year, 48,000 people have died in wars. That's just up to date. Yeah, this is the death clock. I don't know if you've ever gone out on the death clock. You can do a search for it. Lifeexpectancy.com. World, let's see, world free, worldlifeexpectancy.com. Yeah, that's what it is. Had to look pretty close. But we have uh, 48,000 that have died right now. Well, go back to our article here. This is the part that it's highlighted here that I was interested in, that I was searching for. Estimation of the total number killed in wars throughout all of human history. And I know this is more because he doesn't include the battles that are fought in the Bible. There were a thousand millions of people that were killed just during the um, wars with Israel and all the nations around them. You go in there and, and just look at like 70,000 people died in one, one day, you know, and there was even more. And it said that uh, Saul killed his, his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. There was war all the time. Well, it says here that from 150 million to 1 billion, war has uh, taken a lot of lives even in his estimation, and I believe his estimation is so much lower. You know, this really reduces the, the birth rate during wartime. You know, it is estimated uh, that it has caused the population to really drop uh, more than 20 million people. And you gotta remember this, not only the lives that are lost in a war, but when the men are taken away from their families, their wives, and they're sent into war, the birth rate drops also. So there's war affects the population to a degree that we don't even understand. So when I think about wars, uh, you know, there are so many lives that are lost. Now, People might say, well, why does God allow war? It isn't God's doing. If you go to the book of James, I think it's chapter 4. 
Let's just go to search James. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I like the ESC version. Yeah, see if I can find it here. Look. Okay. What causes quarrels? And what causes fighting among you? Is it this, not this? that your passions are at war within you. It's something that's within us. You desire and do not have, so you murder and go to war. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. Do you not have because you do not ask? You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly uh, to spend it on your passions, your adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enemies with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be friends of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you not suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Clean your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Uh, be uh, wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. I just wanted to share that little portion because it isn't God that causes all these wars. It's us. It's our sinful nature. Uh, we have not and we want. It's greed. All war is greed. Uh, and I know that we have enemies that, that hate us. They want to destroy us because they want what we have. We have a great nation. Even with all the, the corruption that's within us now, our nation was founded on the principles of God. But you know that evil men who are uh, being directed by the evil one, the devil. And he's, this is his world. He's the God of this world. God has cast him out of heaven and cast him to earth. And he's the one who's causing all these problems and sin within man. It's our evil nature, nature that's causing all these wars and all these conflicts. Please think about this. This is a real serious thing. Don't, uh, don't think of laughter and joy right now. Uh, we want to turn our mourning into joyous thoughts. But that's, you know, when is the world going to be at peace? When are we going to ever have peace again? Well, that question is asked. You know, 268 years, about 8% of the record recorded history says we've been at peace. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We're not going to have peace in this world until the Prince of Peace returns and sets up his kingdom. Yes, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross for your sins, for my sins, returned to heaven. He rose from the dead. That proves to me that what he says is true. Well, when he was taken up, the angels said to those that were standing by, 
Why do you men look up? This same Christ that went up from you in like manner will come down again. I'm telling you right now, a lot of people will uh, ridicule me and say, well, he's delayed his coming for so long. I'm telling you, we're at the end of this 6,000 year of existence. We're going to be going into the 7,000 year. The 7,000 year, which will be the year of the Lord. Read about the year of the Lord, the year of God, when Christ shall return. And there's going to be the biggest battle ever fought. And it's going to be the battle of Armageddon and its future. And it's coming. It's probably a lot closer than you realize and I realize. I want you to really think seriously today. This world as we know it now is going to be changed. When Christ returns, everything is going to be set right and he's going to reign in righteousness and he's going to reign with a rod of iron there won't be getting away with all these crimes on a technicality if you commit a crime you're going to pay the price well people think i'm going to be dead by the time he comes you know it's a possibility i might be but I'm coming back to reign with Christ. I believe what the Bible says. And you better believe it. Because it's truth. There are a lot of atheists out there. There's a lot of people out there that will try to tell you that the Bible is not true. Well, I'm here to tell you. It's true. No man could have ever wrote that book. There's so many authors, and it was wrote over so many centuries, and yet it all fits together. It's a perfect picture of what God wants us to know. And if you don't take the time to sit down and study it, and study it not to judge the Bible, but let the Bible judge you, and you'll see the big difference. Well, I'm going to end this podcast for now. And the next time I get together, I'm going to talk to you maybe about my time in the military. And I tell you, I got off to a rough start. I served my time. I put in almost five years in the military. I uh, re-enlisted once. I wanted to serve my country. I love my country. And I hate to see what's happening to it. You know, I can kind of ramble on sometimes, but uh, just uh, let's just pray for our nation. Let's just pray that God will uh, help us through this rough time we're going to go through. And things are getting worse. They're not getting better. Yeah, we're getting all this technology, but I believe this technology is hurting us too. Well, I'm going to end my podcast right now. I'm going to thank you for joining me. And uh, just remember, this is down to earth, but heavenly minded. And I am your host, Irv Rish. Goodbye for now. Lord bless. And next time we get together, I'm going to talk about the military and my experience in the military. So with that said, bye for now.